Hey, what's going on guys and girls? Hard Drive here at FineTunesCBShop.com There's been a few things called to my attention here recently. We're going to cover a few of them. Some people claim to be engineers or they know engineers that are full of shit, ignorant, or number three, both. I'm not sure which one yet. But obviously they haven't dealt with many Class C amplifiers. One topic is changing the length of the wire between the radio and the amp doesn't make a difference. Let me turn this heater off. They're absolutely clueless. Or have no experience and never really dealt with it. Therefore they shouldn't talk unless they know what they're talking about. One topic is can the length change the SWR on the modulated carrier? You damn straight it will. For someone to say it doesn't matter just shows and proves that they're entirely clueless or trying to discredit someone. Because once you do change the length of the conduction of the wire between the radio and the amplifier, class C, then the radio is going to automatically change carrier power and how it pinches on the negative peaks. Remember, it's conducting. And there's about 50 different types of amplifiers out there with no standard, really that may conduct from 70 to 120 degrees, God only knows what. And if you can find them all doing the same thing, that's even a miracle. So getting back to pinching on the negative at the output of the amplifier and producing massive harmonics at 54 and 108, there's no traps there. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the radio. Now go back to your books, pay attention. <coughs> I don't normally speak of a Spurs. I try to stay away from all the acronyms. I'm not here to educate any of my competitors anything. But just to show you guys what to look for, what's necessary to achieve what you're looking for out of a radio. And I've mentioned that there's different radios that do this and different radios do that. And there's only so much you can talk about so fast in a video. So I got one right here. We're going to pop it out of the box and check it out real quick. This would be very similar to an Anytone, a 955. And also, even though the RF chain is a little bit different, if you look at the schematics and the block diagrams of these, the RF output, they're practically identical. Some will have another final for a driver because there's more stages, like uh, the M1. The M1 also produ produces these spurious emissions. What are spurious emissions? It's anything that's out of the channel bandwidth or the occupied bandwidth. Spurious emissions. And they usually have nothing to do with odd and even harmonics. Though I have seen where intermodulation distortion will cause spurious emissions on the PA circuit of the radio. And not in the generation of the RF or the actual frequency, no. It doesn't there. This is only new since the MOSFET radios. Just the MOSFETs. I've seen similar things with uh, Bipolars, 1969s, and radios that were heavily modded with mod kits and all kinds of screwball-looking shit. I'm not picking on anyone's stuff, but certain stuff. Just total screwball-looking shit. Dead key, one swing, 50 kind of crap which they hardly put any power out, really, at the antenna. But hopefully this won't make me a fool. Every single one that I've gotten out of the box has been different, but they produce what's called out-of-band emissions or spurious emissions. Let's take a look. going to look at it at uh, 10 meter frequencies. Stuff out of the way. Also take note that these, the intermodulation distortion along with the Spurs create all kinds of wicked shit. 
in any amplifier, especially a Class C. Now, years and years ago, I was on all the pages answering everybody's questions about conduction and amplifiers, etc. No, I'm not a builder. Don't want to be a builder. I get people constantly asking me to build. I'm going to tell you, I'm tied up just with radios. Hold on. And matching them, you know what I mean? Okay. Give me a second here. Let me tape it up. I'll, I'll probably get this radio. I gotta, I gotta get this one done anyway. That's why it's out in here. But I've been sitting here thinking. I mean, no, let me show a little bit more. There's just way too much bullshit out there. Seems like the ones that claim they know something are more full of shit than the rest of them. I'm trying to baffle you with bullshit. Superiority complex, maybe? I don't know. We won't get into that. We'll try to keep this all professional. Here. It's not too hard to get them sensitive enough and have a proper frequency response for SRA-198. No, I don't share how. Okay. And again, see, we can't even get there. So this video, without any type of modification to the radio, I might not even be able to show everything that I want to show. So go to 1 kilohertz I'll have to go to 5 get on the view it okay we're not looking too bad I'm not here anyways so let me get the exact frequency on just 28 megahertz just a few cycles low not bad Exactly 28 megahertz straight out of the box. Okay, it's automatically locked on. So let's go to 1 kilohertz. And this one might be making me a liar. I'm going to spread it out a little bit further. Actually, I'll be damned. Well, there we go. At complete full power, it's not bad. But then again, I can't get to 100% modulation. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm talking straight into the mic. It's not very sensitive. This is where a lot of people are doing their own type of mods to get the proper sensitivity, but it's still the frequency response that's important. So that's probably why, no excuses, but it's probably why I can't get to that percent of modulation. To read that percent of modulation is going to be kind of strange too because the positive negative peak ratio, as you can see, is 
kind of screwy. And it'll go right off the scale. Now that you look at it like that. And this is out of the box now, see? See the positive versus the negative peak ratio? Alright, so let's turn it down to where we can get to at least up against the AMC circuit. And I turn the power down, it's a little bit more sensitive. Alright. So one kilohertz. As you can see, it's the same scenario. I'm hoping that this one does like the majority. Some are better, some are worse. You see the power. Let's get in here nice and close. Now, tuning the radio substantially helps it out quite a bit. These puppies get really, really hot. It takes everything you can to do to keep these things cool. Alright, so now right at and again it's gonna be like impossible to read the modulation percentages because this thing is not even close. It would sound loud, sound okay, but it wouldn't have the same range. Now we can see the same thing in here. Oh you can see it. See I can't see the camera. Alright, see it? Same scenario. Now let's go to 30 megahertz. And there we go. Like I stated before, there's different radios that do different things. This is not a harmonic, nor is it intermodulation distortion. Though this one is creating it, you know, hey, sometimes with a live video like this or unrecorded or unrehearsed, you know, it's not as easy as most people think. So this intermodulation distortion is causing out-of-band spurious emissions. And we can change the power a little bit. And it all changes, see? You try to run an amplifier like this. And most guys want to open up the AMC circuit. Now let's go to 20. You see it all in here? You know, if you attempt to just crank these things up and not have a decent bench, you put this into an amplifier, a Class C, allow this to go straight into the amp, and the amp is going to be pinching like you can't imagine. That's where the SWRs go sky high when you modulate. Everybody has seen that before. Not everybody, but the majority. You know, you be, you'll use an analyzer. You'll use an, a meter. Most of my guys realize you could use the two half wavelengths, short SWR meter, put it right in the middle, tune your antenna, connect the half wavelength in between, rock and roll. You could put anything in there as a mismatch, but when you modulate this thing into a Class C, that negative you know pinches on the negatives drastically because you know it's only conducting anywhere from 70 to 120 degrees they're supposed to be 90 how would you expect it to maintain a linear form it doesn't so whenever you see those negative peaks intermodulation distortion and spurious emissions when you might mod for, for instance okay this one here you know, a given percent of modulation, it doesn't do anything, and then all of a sudden it does, you know, and you change the power output, and everything keeps changing. Let's go to 30. Watch. Well, watch. You can't see me like this, but I'll back out so you can see. There's the power. How would you know what your SWRs are? SWR, excuse me. 
but in this case you might call it SWRs plural you know because you're never going to have a clue what's going on unless you start off with a clean transmitter I hope some of this is informative and by the way this is what you'll get out of I don't know what batch but quite a few of the 955's the M1's any tones, all the later versions of the any tones that I've got, they've been awesome. I mean, crystal, spectrally pure. Better than the majority of the radios that I've seen, you know, CBs and 10 meter radios. So I hope some of this is informative. Pay attention to some of the, well, pay I guess, pay attention to some of the bullshit you hear out there. Because uh, there's a lot of misinformation, it really is. Stay tuned in. You know who it is. Click, click.